So what have I done here? I've ripped out all the old box hedging that lined the inner path. Why have I done this? Well, I was getting a bit of box blight and I was spraying, I was using Signum and other things to keep it in check. But these new varieties of box that are blight resistant have just come into the UK and we are the first of two gardens to get them. I think I'm going to be specifying these a lot over the years and I always think when I specify a plant in other people's gardens, I should know it, I should grow it, I should find out all about it first to make sure I'm doing the right thing. What I hadn't gauged was how difficult it would be to get out the existing box hedge. I planted this hedge about 36 years ago. I was working on a garden in Lewisham and the local authority had bought it. They were knocking down the lovely old Victorian house and there's a beautiful Victorian garden with box parterres and they were going to build new flats. I was a landscape architect doing the new design and I was so sad at seeing these beautiful plants going. So I shimmied over the fence at dawn because the house was full of squatters and I didn't want to get them upset and irate with a big black bin bag and I took well over a thousand cuttings. I rooted the cuttings and they formed the hedge that was here. I thought I'd just be putting in the fork and pulling them out, but no way. We had to winch nearly all of them out. Why are they deep rooted so much? It's because we got a very free draining, hardcore type soil. It was about that much topsoil on the bed when I came. And that's because it was an old crew yard. It's all hardcore underneath. So therefore the roots have to really go down and work hard to get to some moisture. When you go and buy box from Dutch nurseries or English nurseries, it's usually going on beautiful soil. And so when you lift them, they've got nice compact root balls. And also they often undercut them then with a blade, a knife that just slices under the roots. So it stops the tap roots forming and makes them form nice little feeder roots. Here we had tap roots going down quite a distance. I was amazed. When we saw the plants, you realize how stressed they were because I had so many rooted cuttings I planted them much too densely in some cases I'd planted 12 per metre run normally now I know it's best just to do about six per metre run so therefore they are highly in competition with one another all these plants and you see the very few leaves on the plant the leaves are just on the outside and they're totally bald inside I replanted them in the woodland Probably some won't survive, quite a few might not, because they've got such extensive root systems which I've had to trim off. And I've then planted these new plants. Now these plants have a very interesting story. They were bred by Didier Hermans and he's got the brand name Better Buxus. He started in 2007 and he sowed many thousands of box seeds. Box seeds take about a year to germinate. And from those, he then selected 3,000 plants that showed promise of resistance to box blight. And in that time when he'd been growing them, he'd been inoculating with the box blight and really trying to get them to have box blight so he could see which had any signs of resistance. So from those, in 2015, he had then got 150 promising clones, and from that, he narrowed it down to the Fab Four. And these are the ones I've got here. One I've chosen for this one is Heritage. Then there's also Babylon Beauty, which is a much more prostrate grower. Then the Skylight, which is a very upright one that's good for topiary and pyramids and things like that. And then there's the other one, Renaissance, which is similar to Heritage, which is the one I've chosen which is perhaps slightly more compact, slightly more slower growing. Now, I thought I might need to replace all the soil because I'm replanting the new hedge exactly where the old one was, which had some disease. But Didier said that a lot of the spores are in the air as well as in the soil. You cannot remove all the spores that are going to inoculate it potentially. So he said it was OK to plant into the same soil, but obviously to enrich it. So we put on a good mulch of food for it to help replace some of the nutrients that have been taken out. And he reckons I should get a nice clipped little hedge in about two years. So although you might think that this looks very bald and new, 
it actually in two years will have a nice well-formed hedge and I do actually quite like the more open look because the hedges had come in so tight they'd grown really quite high and I think they look better lower and the focal points the box on the corners which were green down to the ground except where they were next to a hedge I've actually raised their skirts lifted the canopy and so I've got these multi-stemmed box specimen sitting around on the corners. I'm going to be able to put a lot more colour into the bits behind the hedge which will be lovely for next year. I'll put in some perennial wallflowers, I'll put in a load more bulbs, all sorts of things so it will really zing I think next year. Didier has put a lot of investment into these plants and I think they're going to be brilliant. These are the very first plants to be planted into the UK. He sent them over to us and one other garden and it's going to be fascinating to see just how they develop but I think he's on to a winner here and I hope so because he deserves it. He's done a lot of legwork behind it.